Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Autumn Poppy Designs podcast. My name is Paula, and I am coming to you from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my husband, my two kids, and our two cats. So, welcome back. Um, I apologize for the delay. I realize it's been like a month and a half. Actually, my good friend Brittany just yesterday reminded me that I should put another one out, and well, I have a day off from work today, so here we are. <laughs> mm. It is currently 8 in the morning, so I am drinking coffee. Also, I apologize for the low lighting. Like I said, it's 8 in the morning, but it's also snowing a lot again. The weather we have had this March in Ontario is just bizarre. Um, <clears throat> January was kind of weird and just cold. February, the snow hit, and then it's just, it keeps coming. It won't stop. I don't understand. We have a very late winter this year. Very late. I'm sorry. I'm just watching the snow. I can't get over. It's, uh, we woke up this morning around six and there was nothing. It was complete silence. Birds were singing. It seemed like it was going to be a nice warm day. And then as we go to leave at like 7.15, it just, <laughs> and it's sticking to the ground. It is a little wet. So when you're driving, the roads are clear, but yeah. I, uh, I dropped off the kids for like 7.30 this morning, and since I've gotten home, it has doubled. So, yeah, it's just like a blizzard out there, like a snow blizzard right now. <laughs> it's bizarre. Um, we've had a couple weird storms. Uh, just last week, we had a blizzard plus thunder and lightning. Everybody was calling it Snowmageddon. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Um, and then the, and the snow was so heavy to lift. It was very wet. Um, it was so heavy to lift and clear away. Um, and then a week before that, we also had another snowstorm. So I ended up having to cancel one of my knitting classes because there was just no way, no way anybody could safely get to, um, to the class. And then literally not two weeks before that, there was another snowstorm um, where I had a dinner with my boss at work and I was skating the whole way home and my usual 15 minute drive took me at least 40 minutes. It was awful. It's been like that. We we get like one terrible snowstorm for one night and then it's just then it's fine for like 2 weeks. And the snow's slowly melting and everything's go away and then we get hit with another storm. So yeah. Bizarre, very bizarre. <laughs> okay, enough snow talk. So the first thing I wanna talk about is my hat. <laughs> um, this is a pattern that I am releasing today. It's called the Colonnade Beanie. And it's more of a slouch than a beanie. I did knit my slouch a little exaggerated from the pattern, um, but it is knit top down. You cast on here and you knit and you keep increasing across around these sides and then you just knit, knit, knit and then bind off here. So yes, I'm just waiting on my tech editor to get back to, to blah, blah, blah. I'm just waiting on my tech editor to get back to me and then I will publish the pattern later today. Um, yeah. Uh, she did get back to me early yesterday, but I was working, so I couldn't send her the updated version until late last night. So we are waiting for today. So yeah. Um, so the reason I called it the colonnade beanie, um, if you know anything about architecture, a colonnade is literally a row of columns um, that you see on classical architecture. So think like ancient Greece and... Um, ancient Italy and things like that. Um, and in Poland, where I'm from, there are a lot of uh, classical inspired structures, um, beautiful libraries, uh, 
churches, honestly, even um, castles have uh, columns, like walls of columns to um, embellish the building. So this beanie is knit in a rib. I know you can't really see it because it's blowing out like crazy, but it is knit in a rib. And I think it kind of matches. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I knit this sample holding a strand of mohair and light fingering yarn together. Um, I also knit a sample for my son and my daughter. My daughter was the original um, beanie, but I realized that the dusty rose color that I had picked out was not something that suited me, but it looks great on her. So I had to rip back a bit and modify the length <clears throat> so that it could fit her. And I used Knitting for Olive Merino and Mohair Held Double. So again, a light fingering and a strand of mohair. Um, and then for my son, I used Cascade Sport in this beautiful like yellowy mustardy kind of color. And that was perfect. So I'd say overall, the gauge for the hat is probably the best would be Sport or heavy fingering or light fingering and mohair held double. Yeah, that was the best way I could get gauge. So, and that's kind of what my sample knitters did as well, or test knitters, I should say. But yeah, so the hat is sized um, from three to six months all the way to adult XL, which is what I am. <laughs> but one thing I do put out in the pattern is a full chart so you can see all the head circumference sizes and then the lengths. Um, so for example, my daughter and my son actually, they're both 19 inch heads, which is technically an adult small, but they're obviously toddlers. So they're three and five. Um, so I adjusted their hat length to meet that sizing, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so like I didn't want to knit the hat the length of the adult small because then their hat would also be super slouchy. Anyway, and they also call it, <laughs> they call these their gnome hats, which is so cute. Because if you actually like on the size on them, and that's also what I can do with this one is I can uh, roll the brim and it sits like this, which I really kind of like too. I think it looks really cute this way as well. Um, but yeah, they get this little tip and they call it their gnome hat. And I think it's so cute and funny. And they love them. They really do. They wear them all the time. So yeah, I think it looks pretty good this way. Sorry, just adjusting my hair because it all pulled up inside. But yeah, so it's, it's, I don't know. I love it. Anyway, the mohair is that I used for this one is um, uh, Sans Garn Kid Silk Mohair. And then the yarn I used is the BC, oh, was it? I want to say it was the BC Bio in the brick colorway because I wanted like an orangey red. But then the mohair I could only get in a red red. And so now it feels just like it's just bright red, <laughs> which is okay. I think it looks really great. Um, but yes, so the pattern is releasing today. If you would like any kind of discount on the pattern, um, please sign up for my newsletter. Um, I will also be changing my newsletter to offer one free pattern instead of just a 25, 20% off coupon. Um, but that won't be until this weekend, maybe later today, depends. Um, but yes, but this will not count in the one free pattern option um, because it is a new release. But I do offer a 20% off coupon within the newsletter um, when I release the pattern. And then as always, Patreon subscribers get uh, over half, 50% off. So yeah. Okay, next. Um, I actually have no other finished objects. I have just been sample knitting. <laughs> I signed up for two different test knits. 
Um, the first test knit I signed up for was, um, oh my goodness, I meant to look up the name and I totally forgot. But the pattern released yesterday. And how cute are these? So it's the Havsies socks. I'll put it in the like, like I'll put it in the bio below um, once I look it up. But it's the Havsies socks, and I knit this for Penny. Um, the front, so you, it's kind of cool. You knit the whole sock flat, and then you seam it together, and it's actually a really clever construction. Um, you also knit this in, so like you knit this and this, and then you knit this and then you continue on to this, and then you close the sock and knit the toe in the circle, and then you knit this in the circle. So I use, this is a single strand held double, if that makes sense. Like it was just um, one color that I held double, but this is two colors and this is two colors. So I decided to like marl, and then, yeah. I can't honestly tell you what any of the yarn is because they're all scrap yarns that I had in my big bin of scrap leftover fingering weight yarn, but it's all fingering weight yarn held double. And so it's intarsia, that's what you're knitting, you're knitting intarsia, and I am honestly obsessed with intarsia right now. I have never, ever, 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 ever done it before, but I signed up to also test knit the Moon Crush Pullover by Jacqueline Seaslag, and that's, so this is the front panel and as soon as I started knitting this I was like game changer this is my new favorite thing I am so so happy with this like it's wonderful so sorry <laughs> there we go so like I said this is the front panel um, I'm working on the back panel right now I have until the end of the month to finish the test knit and because it's a pullover, um, it's gonna have sleeves. So I am using, um, what am I using? I am using Sansgarn, Sans, I don't know how to say it, Sansgarn um, Sisu. There we go. And I can't tell you the colors because they're in codes. But this is like a sage, and then I'm using this honey color, and then this blush pink. So, yeah, it's going really, really well. I actually haven't knit on it in a bit, so it's not, I guess it's not going that well. Um, because I've been busy. My bag is also a mess. I've been working a lot, again. So I haven't had a ton of time, and I've kind of been obsessed with um, a new design I'm working on. So that's kind of taken over my life right now. Sorry, I dropped a stitch. I just want to pick it up so I don't make a mess because apparently I left it in the middle of a row as you do. But yes. I don't know if that's right. But anyway, so this is the back panel that I'm working on right now. And all the yard is tangled, so we'll just leave it at that. But yes, this is the back panel I am working on. I also have a sock in my bag here that's just tangled up in everything. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is, um, the Moon Crush pullover is supposed to be like the long sleeve version of her Moon Crush or whatever she called it. Um, like her sleeveless cropped one that I also own and have not started on yet, and I'm sure if I had, I would have realized how much I love Intarsia by then, um, when she released that pattern last year. But I don't know if you remember, um, the tank that she posted was so beautiful. She used like a bright red right in the middle, and then she had like a gray and a white, and I actually bought yarn for that as well. Um, my local yarn store started carrying Phenogarn. Yeah, so I got a white, a gray, and then a cobalt to go in the middle, which I am thrilled about because I don't know. I only own one sweater in that bright blue color, and it's my favorite. I wear it all the time. Okay, moving on. Let me show you the new design I'm working on. It's a sock. Shocker, I know. 
Um, but kind of loved the idea and went with it. So I am using Mondine. I'm using natural and this bright pink color. And I love it. It is so much fun. I added in a braid, Latvian braid. I did some color work. I added a little bit of ribbing for some interest and a mosaic heel which it's my first time putting that in a pattern, so I was very excited about it. And now for the rest of the leg, I, for the foot, I'm gonna keep going with this rib pattern. Um, I'm trying to decide on adding a little bit of color work just before the toe, and then doing the toe in the pink as well. So, there we are. I love Mondine yarn. Um, my favorite pair of socks that I have are Mondine socks and in case you don't know it's a hundred percent Portuguese wool it's a non super wash and they hold up so well like I'm not holding anything with mohair or silk or anything for um, to reinforce it's just this is it and it like I said, it wears so, so well, and they are so cozy. They're my absolute favorite. So, yes, I will probably be putting out a test call for these as soon as I am done the toe. So hopefully within the next week or so. Hopefully. <laughs> um, and then recently, I... Actually, on February 14th, I released this sock pattern and again it's blowing out but it's called the colorway is Swedish fish from uh, Brian Dye Works and it features a nice little ca um, not cable well that too uh, lace pattern in the middle there's a little cable here and some slip stitches and then it has this pico bind off cuff and it's a shorty sock <clears throat> knit toe up and if you're brand new to toe up sock knitting and never knit any toe up socks I do offer a free tutorial with videos and pattern and the pattern all over on my patreon and you can just subscribe to the basic tier and that pattern is all yours I also offer um, a class on a cuff down sock pattern along with the pattern, video tutorials, and um, access to the Discord channel where you can ask me any questions and if you have run into any kind of trouble. Wow, it's really coming down now. I still have to do groceries today. I was gonna do them after I dropped the kids off, but the store didn't open till eight and I was done dropping Penny off around 7.30. So I wasn't gonna sit in the parking lot for half an hour, so I just came home. Um, sorry, Pepper's jumping around upstairs, my black cat, and making a ton of noise, which I can hear over the baby monitor behind me. <laughs> wow, it's big, fluffy, white snow. I will show you after. <laughs> okay, another sock that I have coming out soon is this. This is again using yarn from Brian Dye, Brian Dye Works. <clears throat> and it features, jeez, that cat. It features a double cable on the back. Let me just turn it so you can see. Yeah, it's got, there we go. Nope, you're still twisting, don't twist. Okay. It features this double cable on the back of the sock and then it has um, these lace panels and ribbing on the front. Whoops. Apparently I am very out of practice. Um, but yeah, it's got these lace panels and this lovely eyelet pattern and it's cuffed down two by two rib with the um, cable contrast heel. I always like to do an eye of partridge. It's just, it's delicate, it's neat, it sits nicely, it just, I don't know, it's my favorite. It looks so good. 
say that. I find this slip stitch heel is just very noticeable. And so when I'm designing a pattern that has a lot of um, detail to it already, I don't want the heel to stand out as much. I just want it to kind of like blend in nicely. And oh my goodness. Okay, let me show you the snow. Let me see if I can do this. <laughs> it's such big fluffy snow oh my goodness it's like a complete whiteout out there too this will, this is gonna be a good day um i do have to do groceries because i have to pick up dinner for tonight and i'm making these like asian inspired noodles ramen but they're like spicy peanut they'll be good um but yes so because otherwise we don't really have any food in the house and I don't want to order pizza because I can't have pizza. <laughs> um, I thought I was lactose intolerant because milk makes me want to throw up now. Um, but it turns out I'm just like really sensitive, like really, really sensitive. Um, we had some delicious cheeses on a charcuterie board the other night and the next day I woke up with like pimples all over my face. like. My skin was red, it was blotchy, it was pimply, it was terrible. And that's when I put two and two together and realized that I have to watch my cheese intake um, and my dairy intake. So, oat milk it is, <laughs> which I don't mind. I absolutely love oat milk in my coffee. It's, I'm never going back. Okay. I honestly think that's all the knitting I have to talk to you about. Yes, I actually ran around the house looking for stuff and that's honestly the pullover and the socks are honestly the only things I'm working on right now. Um, I have a couple other designs I'm also working on but they're on hiatus right now so there's no point in mentioning them. But I did acquire a yarn book or a knitting book that I want to share with you. It's Nora's new book, new-ish, I guess. I actually don't know when this came out. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see if I can see. Okay, I don't see a date attached to this book at all, but, Oh, there we go, on the back. Um, 2002, 22, so last year. Okay, so she put out this book last year. Um, I do follow her on Instagram, but I guess because I haven't liked any of her stuff recently, it hasn't, she hasn't popped up in my feed. Um, but it's called Knit, Fold, Pleat, Repeat. Um, the book is slightly damaged because I bought it from a secondhand shop. But here we are. I don't know if you've seen this book but it is absolutely amazing. The patterns in it are gorgeous. I don't wanna knit everything in the book, but she has some really, really beautiful designs in here and very interesting construction too. Um, like this sweater, which actually isn't a sweater. It's more of like a shawl with sleeves. I don't want to show you too too much because there's like instructions on almost every page on how to knit stuff but there's this one um, and yeah it's mostly just about odd construction about how you can fold a piece of fabric in like very interesting ways um, there's also this beautiful skirt And then she gets into the really funky stuff. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick here. But Nora's the one who put out the cable source book, if you've seen that. Um, she designs a lot of beautiful patterns for Brooklyn Tweed. Oh my goodness, how is it that I cannot find this right now? Oh, there we go. 
and then on the back too. It's just amazing. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I love it so much and I'm just so inspired and I really love reading. Like I love the Cable Source book. I think her cables are just so fascinating and beautiful. Um, but I was going to grab that one, but instead I grabbed this one because it's different. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What else can I share with you? Um, there we go. Now I can't hear her and neither can you, hopefully. Um, okay. So recently I've gotten into a little bit of a hobby of junk journaling. But also not so much junk journaling as I just don't like the idea of having a notebook filled with stickers everywhere. It is just, personally to me, it seems odd and kind of wasteful, I guess. I know it's not, it's therapeutic and a lot of people really, really enjoy it. And I love watching videos of people doing it. I just don't like the idea of spending so much money on stickers which also hasn't stopped me from spending money on stickers. Anyway, I basically just make cover pages for my journals. <laughs> um, I forgot to grab it, but here, I did one for my meal planning that I haven't really used because we haven't meal planned since like the second week of January. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just like a regular notebook that I've used and I added some cover pages to it. I've also done it in my planner. I put stickers all over my planner. I love it. It's just, it makes it look so much nicer to me. Um, and then I have a little reading journal that I do cover pages for for every month that is sitting in a cabinet over there and I forgot to grab it. So we'll just leave it at that. But my little reading journal, I just put in a cover page for the month and I write down all the books that I read them that month and any kind of little review I want to put in. And then that's it. It's just simple. Um, yeah, I also write down all the books that came into my possession. Um, I should honestly start doing it monthly because I started doing it for the year and now I've run out of pages because I didn't leave enough space. But We'll get to the books that have come into possession more recently because we don't have time for <laughs> all of the books that I've come into that have come my way. But I do want to share with you this. I picked up a little binder. I think it's an A6. Um, it's actually off Amazon because I honestly could not find anywhere around me that sold these. Um, even Michael's didn't have any so it's considered a uh, Like a finance one where like you put your money saving stuff into I guess um, Because it comes with the uh, little folders and stuff too inside like um, These things and so you would like slide your money in here and Put away money and things like that anyway I am using it for all of my stickers. So in the front, I have this, this is how much of a problem it's become. I have a subscription to Sticky Club that sells stickers. So every month for like, I don't know, it's 10 or 15 bucks, they send me a whole bunch of stickers. And I love it. It's great, I look forward to it. So, January's was called In Wait for Spring, and they have these beautiful stickers. You get a whole bunch of stuff, like not just those kinds of stickers, but you also get these vinyl stickers that look like this. Um, I got the, you get the actual, um, like this thing to hold everything in. And then it came with a whole bunch of sticker sheets. I think you get one, two, three, four, five, five or six of them. I think I'm missing some out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Maybe seven. Yeah, I feel like there's seven. Anyway, so this was one. This is another one. This one. This one. These are numbers. This one. And then this one. So yeah. Seven. There's seven of them. And then it also came with these beautiful postcards that I am probably never ever going to use, to be honest. But they're lovely. And like I said, it comes with the uh, folio to keep all the uh, stickers in. Um, the next one for February was called Swan Lake. And it actually came with a stamp, which was really cool. So you just put ink on that and then you stamp away. It came with a notebook. Like a tiny little... Oh, this is a sticker book! Oh, sorry, I did not notice that. But yeah, the pages are shiny, so you can stick your stickers on there. That's cool. Um, it also came with a notepad, which I have downstairs. And all of these beautiful stickers, including... Oh, hold on. Also these note cards. There's this one. is hard to see but yeah um, so we got this one this one like they're absolutely stunning and you can see which stickers I have already used I love this one it's so pretty and then it came with what is my favorite is the Monet um, stickers. But yeah. And then there's stickers I acquired from and pages like junk journal kits from people all over the um, from various people on Etsy. So I store them all in here and I have like different ones. Some are just like decorative papers. Some are just different kinds of stickers. Or if the kit came with like a theme, then I kept all the theme together. These are sticker sheets and then these last two are empty. And then I keep the bigger papers back here that don't fit into one of those containers. So yeah, it's a good little way to keep everything together for me anyway, because it's all in one spot. I don't like the idea of having so many boxes everywhere of stickers and stuff, so I don't know, I like it. Um, also, in my Etsy shop, if you're interested, looked like there was like a giant white hair sticking out. Um, also, in my Etsy shop, if you're interested, I put together two different sticker paper bundles, um, just extras. Some of the, uh, it's just stickers that I know I won't use, but are still beautiful and I would love for somebody to take them home and enjoy them. Um, but they're also extras because I got a lot of duplicates. So I put together like a whole set that was literally double. Um, you got two of everything and I honestly don't need two of everything. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, so those are both available in my Etsy shop. Um, and yeah, so let me share with you the books that I recently got. The first one, so I should probably preface this by saying that I follow a lot of bookstagrammers on Instagram, but I follow different ones thematically, I guess. So one of my books, the one of the people I follow likes to read a lot of horror. So this was her recommendation. It's called The Spike House. And I've actually that's not true. I've read horror in the ter in terms of like Stephen King, but I've never read like anybody else's horror. So I'm actually really, really excited for this one. Um, it says, Eric Ross is on the run from mysterious past with his two daughters in tow. When he comes across a strange ad for the Mason house in Degner, Texas, Eric thinks they may have finally caught a lucky break. The most haunted place in Texas needs a caretaker. 
All they need to do is stay in the house and keep a detailed record of everything that happens there. Provided the house's horrors don't drive them all mad, like the caretakers before them. The job calls to Eric, not just because there's a huge potential payout, but because he needs access to the secrets of the spite house. If it is indeed haunted, maybe it would help him understand the uncanny power that clings to his family, driving them from town to town, too afraid to stop running. A terrifying gothic thriller about grief and death and the depths of a father's love, Johnny Compton's The Spite House is a stunning debut by a horror master in the making. So, very excited for this one. Also, I picked up episode 13, which is sitting on my counter over there. <laughs> Um, episode 13, if you haven't heard of it, it's a new release. Um, it actually just came out recently. Uh, it is about a, what do you call them? Kind of like Ghostbusters, I guess. Um, ghost chasers. Um, uh, they're just like a group of people that film movies and haunt, not movies, um, film haunted houses, I guess. And so they end up in one and it drives them all crazy and it's, it sounds good. Um, I don't know if that's actually all of it, but there's, it looks good. <laughs> I also picked up Grady Hendrix, How to Sell a Haunted House. I own his other book called, um, A Book Club's Guide to, Kill it, to Slaying a Vampire or something like that. What's it called? The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Yeah. Um, yeah, that book was actually really, really good. It was one of the uh, first books I picked up to get back into reading. And it was great. This one sounds also really, really great. Um, basically, this lady has a haunted uh, house left to her. Turns out it's haunted. And... That's really it. It's selling a haunted house, but it's like a family home. So there's all these backstories and hidden stories and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, I picked up Lisa Unger's Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. Um, yeah, so let me just read you the back. Um, What could be more restful, more restorative than a weekend getaway with family and friends? But the idyllic weekend is about to turn into a nightmare. A deadly storm is brewing. The rental host seems just a little too present. The personal chef reveals that their beautiful house has a spine-tingling history, and the friends have their own complicated past, with secrets that run blood deep. How well does Hannah know her brother, her own husband? Can she trust her best friend? And who is the new boyfriend crashing their party? Meanwhile, someone is determined to ruin the weekend, looking to exact a payback for deeds long buried. Who is the stranger among them? But yeah. Um, Ruth Ware and Gillian McMullen are both um, reviewers of the book, so it has to be good. Um, also, I bought this book twice. I didn't realize I bought it. I can't remember where I bought this one from, but then I was at Shoppers mailing packages and I looked at the book selection and I picked it up again. So when I realized I already owned it, I had to return it. And that was the second time I had to do return a book I already purchased. Um, yeah, I have to stop buying books. Oh, there's episode 13. I did grab it. Episode 13. Okay, so let me see. Um, Fade to Black is the newest hit ghost hunting reality TV show led by husband and wife team Matt and Claire Kirkland. It features a dedicated crew of ghost hunting experts. Episode 13 takes them to every ghost hunter's holy grail, the Paranormal Research Foundation. This crumbling, derelict mansion holds secrets and clues about bizarre experiments that took place there in the 1970s. It's also undoubtedly haunted, and Matt hopes to use scientific techniques and high-tech gear to prove it. But as the house begins to slowly reveal itself to the crew, proof of an afterlife might not be everything Matt dreamed of. It sounds great. Anyway, this guy also won an award, um, a Bram Stoker Award. 
Never heard of it. Sounds amazing. I need to look into it. But yes. And then I picked up Stone Blind, which is a story about Medusa. I'm very excited for this one. I still have to read Circe. Circe, Circe, but yeah. Excited. Okay. I have two more books to show you, and then I am done. <laughs> I am a member of the Book of the Month Club, which gets you um, brand which shares brand new releases. Um, I talked about this in my last podcast, but it's basically a subscription box. So every month you get to pick your featured book and the books that are featured are anywhere between like four or six books that they feature, um, but all in different themes. So you get your general fiction, you get your historical fiction, thriller, mystery, um, romance, things like that. Um, so I went with a, so last month I went with a thriller. This is the writing retreat. Um, it's now available on bookshelves, but I got it from here because I really wanted it. <laughs> uh, along with two other books because you can add up to two extra books a month for 15 bucks each. And that's in Canadian dollars. Um, but yes, so it's the writing retreat. It sounds so great. I've had my eye on it and then it became available and I was really, really excited about, and yes. Um, the other book then last month for March, I picked up this one, Wayward. I feel like this one's been out for a bit, but I'm not sure. Looks like it was published in... 2023 so maybe not but I also feel like I've seen it before anyway this is fantasy I think it says here it's weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries wayward is an astonishing debut and enthralling novel of female resilience um, so it's 2019, 16, 19, and 1942. So there's three stories there. And it's exciting. <laughs> it's been in my TBR, so I don't know on Goodreads. So I'm not sure how long it's been out for. But yes. Anyway, I also have a whole bunch of other Book of the Month books downstairs that I need to read. I think since I started this in January, I have now amassed nine books no because I got some in December 10 11 I don't know a lot and I need to get to reading so what else is there to tell you before I sign off um, if you're looking for any stitch markers be sure to check out my Etsy shop as I have a ton of stitch markers, progress papers, and stuff in stock. I also have some needle stoppers available and I will be getting more soon. Um, I also am, like I said, I'm releasing this hat pattern today, so be on the lookout for that. Subscribe to my newsletter if you'd like a free pattern. Um, and also, if you're interested, be sure to check out my Patreon. I do offer one free pattern a month there with the uh, with a subscription. Um, I also offer a 50% off coupon for a lower tier. And then the last the lowest tier offers access to all of our knit alongs, our Discord chat. Um, we do, I am planning for the month of April, a read along. So if you're interested, join that member. And yeah, let's see, what else? Oh, I mentioned earlier that I provide knitting, like I'm a knitting teacher there. <laughs> That's probably the best way to say that. Um, so I have one yarn store in town that um, does knitting classes. So that's where I'm at. I'm a teacher there in the afternoons, late evenings. Um, and then there's another place 
two towns over <laughs> that also offers knitting courses that I run. Um, but I would love, love to be able to teach some more. So I have a tier on my Patreon where you can sign up and we can have one-on-one -on -one chats um, through Zoom where we get together and go over any knitting help that you might need. Um, you just have to send me a message with what you would like to go over so I have the right tools and so that I am prepared to help you out. Um, but I can also offer classes one-on-one -on -one in person if you are in the area. So I've been posting to my Instagram, haven't had any hits yet, but I'm hoping somebody would love to learn how to knit with me. And with me, I mean like me teaching them how to knit anyway. <laughs> um, I do just about everything now except for brioche. That is the only thing that I haven't gotten into. I've done half brioche, but not full brioche. So it's the only thing I can't teach, I think. <laughs> but yes, okay, I will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you next time. Bye.